Hey guys, Jared Beckwith here. I'm a registered EEG technologist, and in today's video, we're gonna look at the effect that medication has on an EEG brainwave recording. Now, this is gonna be on your board exam if you're studying EEG, and it's just good to know in the field in general. So when you come across and look at these EEGs that you're hooking up, or if you're the neurologist reading it, you'll know why the EEG is looking the way it is, depending on the medications that the patients are taking. Now, let's get into a record of a 50-year-old who is on Lamictal, Triliptal, I think, and Valium. Opening up this EEG, we can see already in the beginning, in the front, there's a high-frequency activity going on beta activity it's between 15 and 20 waves per second that's pretty fast guys and it's pretty persistent throughout the entire record and now it says in the history that the patient was drowsy and maybe a little bit sleepy during the recording and here's a little arousal you can see this muscle artifact in the frontal regions here so this isn't coming from the brain. This is probably them scrunching up their forehead a little bit. Little tension in the forehead can create this activity that we're seeing here in all the frontal channels. But other than that, this is all brain activity, which is also influenced by probably the medication volume. That's my best guess. Benzodiazepine, it makes sense as to why this patient is showing so much beta activity on their record. Because normally in an EEG, you're gonna see between eight and 12 waves per second in the back of the head. That's what you're gonna wanna look for. And if we count this patient's background, while they're a little bit more aroused, because before they were pretty drowsy, now we can count the range in the back of the head, how many waves per second, 01 and 02, that's where you want to count for the background. And we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah, it's consistently showing a beta pattern continuously throughout this record. And yep, that is most likely due to this medication that they're taking, the volume. Now we can see it not only by counting the waves, we can pull up the trends of the EEG and see. That's why we're seeing a little bit higher between around 17 waves per second. This is all that beta activity that we're seeing throughout the EEG. And the amplitude on both sides, the red line is the right side, blue line is the left side, they overlap. They're pretty symmetrical, I would say, on both sides, just from looking at the trends and the raw EEG data, which is the even more important part. Now, that's pretty much it for this EEG, but another kind of medication artifact you can see, which you see a lot in the ICU, is a medication called propofol. Very important, guys. It can cre create kind of the opposite of what these benzodiazepines are doing. Benzodiazepines create the beta activity, the fast activity. Propofol can actually cause a burst suppression pattern. So you can see instead of 15 to 20 waves per second, like the super fast beta activity, it can be essentially flatline for some periods of time. So pretty much like no waves per second. It'll be flatline for a little bit, and then you'll see a little burst of activity. Now, we want to make sure that it's coming from the propofol and not the actual brain being in burst suppression pattern because that wouldn't be good. If you're doing a patient in the ICU and they're on propofol and you take them off the propofol and they're still in a burst suppression pattern, that is a very poor prognosis and it's not looking good. So if you're doing a routine EEG in the ICU and the patient is on propofol, I would ask the nurse to pause it, please, politely, and for the 20, 30 minute recording, and then they can go back to on their propofol because they're on it for a reason. They're in a probably a not so great situation and always make sure the patient's stable, always check with the nurse, and they're usually pretty helpful in 
help us get these great recordings for the doctor and the doctor or the neurologist can help treat them as best as possible. So no epileptic activity in this record that we found, just beta activity from that value medication. Common benzodiazepines, you got Xanax, which is also Alprazolam. Every medication got like two names. You got the main brand and the generic. You got Ativan, you got, which is also Lorazepam, and then you got Mitazolam, all these Zams and Pams, you might think, oh, this is probably benzodiazepine. So if you get to ask a question on a test, you'll know, benzodiazepine beta. That's the main takeaway from this video. Hope you guys like this video where I explain what does medication do to the EEG. Hope you learned something. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe for more. If you like this video and you like the EEG software I was using, you can download it for free on my website, ioneeg.com. Now, good news and bad news. Good news is I tested it with hundreds of people already. And bad news is now it's getting labeled as a virus. All the antivirus, I think Windows Defender, we got McAfee, we got Norton, all labeling us as a virus. I had to make a new Google Drive to even send out the software. So if it, they're deleting it off your computer, I probably got to go through and fix that. But these are good problems to have. I couldn't have gotten here without you guys. I love you all. Couldn't do it without you. And I'll see you guys on the next video.